Namaste. Welcome to my channel Qubit Educational Services. In this video, I'm going to tell you a few very important things related to the ISR aptitude test, which you should do just before the examination as well as during the examination. Okay. So the first question that we should answer is why should we have a strategy before we attempt such examinations? Okay. The answer is obvious. You have worked so hard for two years or for three years if you're a repeater and you would not definitely like this opportunity go okay go okay so whatever efforts that you have put in the hard work that you have done those three hours are going to decide or give an opportunity to do to do your best okay that hence you should have a definite strategy so that if you have crystal clear thoughts then you can focus more on the questions that are posed to you okay yes so the first thing is you need to write as many mock tests as you can and my recommendation is you you write them strictly on a desktop or a laptop and if you are uh, appearing for the tests on a laptop then use a mouse don't use touchpad because in the actual examination this is these are the devices that you will be uh, using okay and preferably uh, see the purpose of mock tests is to simulate the actual exam interface okay so uh, till this stage it's okay if you were writing the mock tests on the google forms or any other uh, interface but i think in the remaining three or four days it's it's good if you use the the actual exam interface or something similar to that like we have provided in our mock tests okay and not only to get the feel of how the exam looks you should also exactly know what instructions are where the location of those instructions is going to be how to select the correct option where is the question palette what is the color scheme what does red blo block mean and so on green box mean and so on okay how to clear the response or how to mark an mcq for a review and so on and in the actual uh, paper or in the actual test you will you will be having four sections okay these four sections look like tabs in a browser okay biology chemistry physics mathematics okay so you should all exactly know where these things are so that you will not waste one or two seconds even in deciding where to look look for those things okay one more thing that you must do uh, once your mock test is over is your post exam analysis okay now these entrance examinations are uh, the questions are framed in such a way that generally no one completes all questions uh, before time okay so during the post exam analysis you can actually look for the questions where you went wrong and the areas of your improvement okay of course if you do it for two or three mock tests then you will have a better idea because you'll have more data right so this was my first point yeah the second point is something which i have not seen anyone talking about and this is anxiety creation i call it anxiety creation before the test okay see now why is this important because when you are when you're going to enter the examination hall or the computer center uh, there will be a, a, a gap of 15 or 20 or even 30 minutes uh, between the uh, between your occupation of the seat the uh, when you sit in front of the computer and the actual beginning of the exam and the the thoughts or whatever things that comes to, thing that comes to your mind in those 30 minutes that might uh, that might reflect or change your mood okay so what i will suggest is uh, whenever you are writing the mock test you sit idle for 10 or 20 minutes okay you don't see because whenever we are writing mocks what we do is even before we begin one minute before that we are reading books or notes or important formulas okay that's obvious but uh, in the examination you are not going to get that opportunity okay you will just be given you will just have your hall ticket your identity proof maybe and a pen okay so you sit idle and let those thoughts come in the mock tests and not in the actual examination okay now during that time your identity verification will be done okay you you may be required to sign a few documents and so on but you uh, you you will not be having access to your study materials or whatever notes that you might have prepared okay so let that anxiety get created during the mock tests and not during the actual examination okay and i think you should i mean as i said you must implement it before you write the remaining mock test you have to keep calm okay you sit idle for 10 15 or 20 minutes even and and see that is going to have a very positive impact on your performance all right so this is regarding anxiety creation before the test and also during the test okay 
again in mocks if you don't maintain the discipline of not leaving your seat before the actual time uh, uh, runs out it, it that's not going to happen in the in the actual exam that means if you are not patient to sit down for 180 minutes or maybe for that matter 200 minutes continuously at a single place then that is also going to affect your performance because you are not you are not habitual with that okay so don't even go to washroom during your mock tests okay I know it's a bit uh, difficult to say this, but yes, this is what this. I mean, this uh, this might be one of the possibilities which you would not like to be come into reality. Okay, to come into reality. So during the mocks, do not leave your seat. Okay, that's the anxiety creation during the test. All right. Let's go to the fourth point. Huh. Now this is like the actual beginning of the examination, and before you begin, you must have your order of sections very clear. Okay, or order of subjects, I would say. If if you are a PCM student, then either ideally the order should be maths, physics, chemistry, and biology. And if you are a PCB student, then your order should be biology, chemistry, physics, and then maybe mathematics. Okay. Now I'm not saying that you should stick to these orders that I am suggesting. If your favorite is physics or even for that matter chemistry, you can also follow that particular sequence. But once you decide it, then don't change it. Okay. Because if again. You you don't want your your thirty seconds to go in th in thinking or in deciding which section am I going to attempt first, okay? Or you just follow the order in which those questions appear. I think it is biology, chemistry, physics, and then maths. But I would recommend you to start with your favorite subject or the subject that you find easy because once you get three or four questions right or once you are able to solve them in succession, that is going to boost your confidence. Okay, and it's better if that happens in in the first ten or fifteen minutes. Okay, so you can decide your own order, but stick to it. Okay, don't change it during the exam. Yeah. Uh, another thing is that uh, well, this has happened with a lot of my friends, and that is uh, you they they would spend a lot of time on a single question thinking. Uh, well, th their thought process is. why am i not able to solve this question although i have uh, prepared everything from that particular topic okay it happens during the examination everyone goes through this so please do not spend too much time on a single question you can mark the question for review and this decision should be quick whenever a question comes you read it and immediately you should decide whether you are going to solve it right there or later okay see it shouldn't happen that you didn't get time to even read some of the questions okay so you should visit every question at least once it's okay if you don't get it in your first or even second try okay you browse through all 60 questions i'm sure there must be uh, there will be 10 or 12 very easy questions which can be solved even without any preparation okay so you should visit every question at least once or even for that matter twice so that you will at least have this uh, satisfaction that i have read the question and no question was left okay so don't spend too much time on a single question okay just switch quickly ha huh. now the next one is mcq handling apart from the standard method now by standard method i mean the intended way to solve the problem which might be application of a theory or application of a theorem or application of a formula or using a fact okay now this usually works in uh, in mathematics so i i'm going to explain three things okay the first method is elimination for example if you read this question from uh, abstract algebra option a says the, that q is and closed q is closed under the given operation and option d says q is not closed now you know that it ha it will either be closed or it is not closed which means you you don't even bother to check what the options b and c are Uh, telling you, or you you don't bother to check. Okay, so it has to be either A or D, and this is the elimination. You have successfully eliminated options B and C. Okay, and this will also work if your time, if if if, if the time is running out, and you you are maybe you think, okay, no, I should mark this question. Okay, so when you leave the incorrect options, even if there are two of them, the probability will get doubled. Okay, if you are guessing it, then the orig original probability probability is twenty five percent. but if you eliminate these two then it will rise to 50% so there is a higher chance that you will get it right so this was the elimination second one is simplification now this is also going to work in some of the cases okay so in simplification what we do is we don't try to prove the general result for example if you read this question from complex numbers it it talks about nth roots of infinity 
okay so you can try that value of n which is going to give you different options for example if you try n as 2 then leave options a and b if you let n to be 2 then this is going to be 2 and this is going to be 4 n squared so even by considering this very simple case of x equal to 1 and x equal to minus 1 you are going to get the answer okay so you can uh, think of such simplifications and well there are of course many tricks for example you have kayla hamilton theorem in matrices i've explained that in one of my uh, videos okay what is what's kayla hamilton theorem and how to use it okay then we have markov's inequality in probability this is something which i there was a question in my test series if you have attempted it so if you use the markov's inequality then even without knowing the standard deviation or variance you can actually estimate the probability okay so that's related to probability then of course everyone knows the leibniz rule and the l hospital rules but there's one more thing that i would like to uh, mention in one of my previous videos uh, 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 there was a comment regarding use of calculators okay because in my mock tests i provided the calculator uh, because one of my previous students told me that it was allowed okay but now if you access the mock test which the isr app admission dot in that website has provided they have given the calculator okay so you can actually find some of the limits on the calculator what you have to do is let's say it is limit as theta tends to 0 sin theta by theta then you can choose a value of theta let's say 0 0.001 put it there and see okay it will be, it will be very close to 1 maybe point triple see now you don't have the uh, right to do this but it's well within the rules of examination because calculator is allowed okay so you can find some limits uh, on on calculator of course the the paper setters are wiser than me so they i mean they will of, of course take care of this particular loophole uh, that the calculator is providing but nonetheless if you're smart enough then of course you will uh, get to know more about that okay and the use of the calculator is not only restricted to just finding limits you can also establish certain inequalities like you can decide which one is greater is it e raised to pi or pi raised to e okay you can also decide that on, on calculator okay yes and, and my last point is exactly that use of calculator it is allowed but unfortunately only this on-screen calculator is allowed which is to my opinion not as user friendly as the casio calculators i will i don't have it right now with me okay but but later on when you will go into your first year you will definitely use those casio calculators which are much better uh, in handling okay so uh, my recommendation would be in the remaining two or three days you uh, get used to the interface the syntax and the order of input okay for example in some calculators if you want to type 3 raised to 2 you have to first select 3 and then 2 this is what the casio calculator uh, follows okay but in some calculators especially the indian brand calculators they require you to first type 2 and then 3 so it won't be 2 raised to 3 but it will be 3 raised to 2 so these are a few very minor uh, things which might play a major role in in your exam performance okay you also can see these options of switching between uh, degree and radian modes for the trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions you won't need the hyperbolic and uh, inverse hyperbolic functions in my opinion but you also have some other things some very good things here like log of x to the base y that's something which is interesting okay maybe that come that might come in the limit problem who knows okay so get used to the calculator it will be of definitely of use particularly in physics or to some extent in chemistry as well okay Yes, so those six points uh, were the ones that I wanted to cover. Use of calculator, MC grinding apart from the standard method, anxiety creation during and uh, before the exam, do, do not spending too much time on the, on the calculator and finally the order of sections. Okay, so I think uh, you will make it, go for it. You can take the official mock test, which is by the way, the second uh, model paper, which the, the body has given or you can access our mock tests okay this is the link i'll upload the ppt and and give give the link to you in the video description okay if you have any doubts you can um, <coughs> reach out to me on info at the rate qubit dot com or uh, pranesham at the rate alum dot iisc dot ac dot okay once again uh, all the best for your isr aptitude test 2021